Welcome back to my channel. I bet you didn't know, but I'm actually in a play. And it's called Ancient of Ways. And today I'm interviewing the director, the writer, and the vision, Miss Alexis Rome. Hey, Jay. Hey, girl. Hi. <laughs> so, so excited to be here. I'm <laughs> excited to have you here. So Today, I'm going to be asking you a few questions, but to start off, tell us a little about yourself. So uh, I am a, an artistic theologian, uh, trained as a minister, and my uh, way of ministry is through art, and my art form is storytelling. I tell stories on diverse platforms, on page, stage, screen, web, podcast, and radio. We're here in my uh, podcast studio right now recording this. And so I'm so, so very, very excited uh, to be here with you today. This is wonderful. I'm excited to have you. Okay. So the first question I'm actually going to ask you is how long have you been writing plays? Oh, gosh. Um, I've been writing plays um, since I was a little girl. And what was funny is that my mother and I were just talking about how one of the first plays that I wrote, one of the first stories that I wrote, she was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And it hurt my feelings so badly, but she took my story to her um, job. And one of her coworkers was like, oh, this is clever. So I think I was about seven, uh, about seven or eight years old at that point. And so it's been since then, but I, pro I produced my first professional production um, at a, a theater in Phoenix, Arizona uh, that opened 2014. And so, yeah, I'm approaching 10 years professionally uh, with plays, but uh, over 20 years as a professional storyteller. My first book was released in 2001. So, and I just realized that the character, uh, Miss Denise at the Ancient of Ways is set in, she was introduced in, in that book, that first book, Premature Pleasures. She was? So yeah, so, oh my God. So Miss Denise has been on the scene for like over 20 years. I'm super excited. That sounds really <laughs> cool. I know sometimes I do, write small um like short stories um I know I had like a talent show so I did write like a short story for that and it was very fun I like to draw so I do pictures and yeah it came out good actually okay good deal I can't wait to see that <laughs> yeah maybe get that one staged yeah. hint, hint. <laughs> the second question I'm going to ask you is when writing, how do you prepare? When I'm writing, um, I prepare by first remembering. There's something very powerful about your memory and where you've been. There's also something very powerful about um, examining the stories that, you know, are not being told that are not out there. And so I look for, okay, what do I remember and what do I not what stories do I not see being told? And then I have this thing called a concept generator where I'll just, uh, in my phone, I have a notepad and a note, little note, notepad in the phone. And I'll just uh, write out the, the, the concept like um, a little girl, a little black girl loves to dance and is often judged for it. Uh, and she then joins a praise dance group and uh, does a ratchet dance. <laughs> okay number one i've not seen that play that story told before and i'm like hmm maybe you know maybe i need to do that so that's pretty much what i do i think about what uh, what i've experienced and then i see what's out there um that i've not that i see what's not out there and then i i attempt to to fill that void that's a little hint of the play <laughs> um but something i do to the to prepare when I do write my uh, short stories, I sometimes are like, okay, so first before I, like, I just go like, boom, I'm just gonna say, okay, 
what am I going to write about? Am I going to write about this? Or, But before I actually start writing, I like to draw pictures first because mm. like, I like to draw pictures. Um, Yeah, I love it. I love to draw. So that's my main one to do when I'm bored. I'm so jealous of people who can draw. I've never been able to draw my whole life. I'm not a, I like, I, I'm, I'm a whiz with like those little stick figures. So I put a stick figure and my stick figure always has like an afro or like some curls. <laughs> I'm jealous of you, uh, you visual artist. Uh, I, um, I'm a performance artist. So. Well, actually. A literary artist as well. Sometimes I do sometimes redraw, but sometimes I just like find a video to watch and just draw and I'm like, okay, do this, do that, and yeah. all that stuff. But when I try to draw by myself, I'm like, this looks horrible. Well, you know, the creative process is just so um so varied. Yeah. You know, we can do go go so many different ways. Yeah. The third question. For kids my age, what advice would you give when it comes to acting? Oh, that is such a good question. Um, for kids your age that are interested in acting, the advice that I would give would be to join one of the, the summer uh, youth camps. Mm -hmm. um, there are like all of the, the theater companies. They love training young people. And so there's always a theater camp um, for, for young actors, aspiring actors. Um, the, uh, you know, if you happen to be a part of a faith community, like a church, a lot of them often will have a theater or drama department. I would encourage you to get exposure and experience there. Uh, you know, even in schools, uh, every, you know, school, most schools have art programs. And um, here's what's interesting. Even if your school does not have an, uh, a, a theater program, there is usually a teacher or an administrator or someone on the campus that is very interested in the arts and wanting to expose young people. So a lot of times, if you don't see it there, if you ask them, it's like, hey, I'm interested in like, a, a, you know, in acting. Um, can we start a, a youth program? Even if they can't start a class, they can start a club. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a way for, you know, the, you know for, for a young person to get some experience, some exposure, you know, to get out there. Again, like when we're talking about creativity, there's no, there's not one way. But when it comes to training young actors, there are a ton of programs that um that are that are actually doing that. Um I wasn't actually really into acting. Um, wow. but now actually that like I had the audition and then you told me I had lines I like, okay, data memorize this line memorize this and write that and now like i really get into acting i know since i'm like in elementary school they don't have like drama class but oh I'm, really they don't have drama class in elementary school i didn't know that okay. but when i get to those higher class classes i'm actually most likely to try out for drama classes mm -hmm. well, acting. well here's the thing though so i think um one of the things that i like to do is to remove the the mystery from acting, from from just the artistic, um, you know, process in, in, in general. Um, so in the same way that I watch people, uh, I watch programs, I watch shows, you do that as well. So you were just telling me about your cousins and uh, you reenacted for me, whether you know it or not, you reenacted for me the conversation that y'all had when you told them that you were going to be on an interview and you did it with uh, not just the words, but with the expression uh, when you said, uh, well, I'm going for an interview. And you said, girl, you're doing, you're going to be on TV. Like you did all of those. That is what, that, that's what you, that, that's what acting is. It is um, uh, remembering and sort of reinterpreting those lived experiences that you have already witnessed. And so I think that um, the thing for young actors, again, going back to, to that question, is to, um, to remember what you've already seen and to know that just, you know, mimic that to the extreme and, uh, and you're, you're, you're closer to acting. But I was also able to give you that line. Now, I gave you the option. I did say, Jada, if you don't want to do this, you can tell me no. Did I not say that? I gave her, I gave, I gave them the option to tell me no. But I also um, 
very much believe that you could do this because it was, you know, a little girl, she's a dancer, you know, she's at this church, they're doing a praise dance. So I, I, I felt like, like you, you kind of know this character. So that's why I felt, I felt safe that you'd be able to do it. And you have been amazing. She has been amazing. Thanks. <laughs> um, I know the first time I ever actually acted and done um, like a play is actually for my church. It's like I was very little, like five or six or something or something like that. But it's like this Christmas play and then they mm -hmm. showed it on the church. And I was like, okay, wow, this is my first time acting. I wonder one day I'm gonna get a whole gig and I'm gonna be so famous and so I already told Jada I said when you accept your award I want you to say okay I first give an honor to God I want to thank my mom I want to thank my dad my family and also Miss Alexis I've already put my name in there I was like call my name out too when you <laughs> get those big awards Jada they're coming I promise I will I will <laughs> okay the next question we're gonna add I'm a I'm going to ask is, what was the story behind this book? So um, Ancient of Ways uh, for Colored Girls Who Considered He Fall When Jesus Came Up Short. It's an interfaith love story, and it's, it follows the life of um, a young woman, uh, Denise. Um, and she is a very spirited dancer. She loves to dance. Uh, she loves Jesus, and she's a very upstanding person. But there are people who judge her because she's just too spirited in her dancing. And so um, she wants to please God. And so she stops dancing. If her, if her dancing does not please God, the way she moves her body, whatever, uh, she's like, okay, I want to please God. And so she stops dancing and um, tries to kind of pour herself into like a, a really, um, you know, conservative space. It doesn't work. And she goes to a jazz brunch, meets a man, a very handsome man, socially conscious, you know, good guy. The only problem is that he uh, does not, he, you know, he don't do Jesus. <laughs> he practices the uh, the Yoruba um, faith tradition. It's the uh, an African indigenous religion. And so Denise is a Christian and she says, hey, yo, like uh, you don't do Jesus. We're gonna be cool, we ain't gonna be close. Yeah. And then they get close. Uh, and <laughs> so while all of this closeness is, is happening, Denise is also running a, a praise dance ministry um, at her church. And uh, Jada plays uh, one of, it's girl, girl two. Yes. Uh, and uh, so she is a part of Miss Denise's uh, praise dance ministry. And so, you know, it is an adult production because again, it's, you know, it's, it's an interfaith love story. But uh, Jada and I were talking earlier about how it's important uh, for us to remember that like, you know, there is really, there are very few spaces where there are only children or only adults. It's like, we're all, you know, mixed in together. And so uh, I wanted in this production to be able to show that. And so, yeah, we're, uh, we're getting it in and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Oh my goodness, watching, watching everybody, you know, embody, you know, the, the parts uh, to play their role. It has been fantastic to see this this vision, this dream come to life. <laughs> I absolutely love the play. I'm so excited for Thank all you. of you guys to watch it. And I just can't wait. Yeah, me either. It opens this, uh, it opens Thursday, July 14, and it runs Thursday to Sunday, uh, 7.30 each night. And then the last show is uh, the last day of July, July 31st. Uh, at St. Agnes uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, right next to St. Augustine's University. Okay, the next question is, what is your passion? Oh gosh, my passion is um, genuinely to tell stories about the sweetness of Black girls and the compassion of Black women. I think that too often when we are talking about um, black girls or black women, the, the, the thing that everybody loves to say is they're so loud, they're so loud. And uh, we are so much more. Um, we're, we're smart, we're brilliant, we're funny, we're amazing dancers. Uh, we advocate for folks. We, you know, we, we love well, we love hard, um, and we are looking out for everyone. 
And too often we forget to look out for ourselves. And so I'm all the time trying to find really creative ways of just saying, okay, let's center our joy. And so this play and um, uh, the, the, the stories that I tell are genuinely a, um, uh, are about centering my passion, um, which is telling me stories about, hey, FYI, Jada exists and she is a sweet black girl and she's not the only one. Uh, and then um, so many compassionate black women like that, that just kind of goes endlessly. But, but I, I want to be the, my passion is telling stories so that everybody knows that it's not like just this one-off kind of a thing. Like that is, that's a reality for who we are. I feel like that's very inspiring. I feel like when you say that, I guess it's like very fight for some people that do want to be story writers and like just hearing your story like, oh yeah, I can do this. I, I'm beautiful. I can do this. I'm great. I'm awesome. I feel like I can do this. And I feel like when you say those things, it tells people that don't always feel like you're just stuck in this like small cage. It's like, it's like exactly. yeah, just be free, just have freedom. Yeah. Jada understands the assignment, like hashtag what Jada just said. <laughs> um, the next question, what other plays have you written? So the first play that I wrote was, uh, of, was a, a, an adaptation of my first book, Premature Pleasures. It's Premature Pleasures, the play. So the play had the same title as the book. And it follows an 11 year old girl named Trek, who is, she's 11, but she looks like she's 15 or 16 hooks up with a scandalous group of 15 and 16 year old girls one summer in an apartment complex in Houston, Texas. The parents are working, the kids are home alone, unsupervised, and there's all kinds of drama. And then a woman from a church down the street named Miss Denise comes through, does this um, vacation Bible school one summer and the kids all love Miss Denise. And then, um, the Bible school was, vacation Bible school was only supposed to last like a week, but because the kids loved her so much, the apartment management gave her weekly access to the clubhouse. So she did a, a weekly Jesus at the clubhouse and, um, the kids all loved her, but she had a make, she had a heart for my baby girl, Trek. And so you watch her, uh, needle her way into Trek's life. And then when that connection is made, you know, it's like the rest is history. Yeah but that is the Miss Denise that Ancient of Ways is based on. So all of this just feels so like, ah, oh my goodness. And that was 20 years ago that that book was released. And so here we are now 20 years later telling sort of the backstory. And um, one of the, the things that I love about Ancient of Ways is that sometimes we act like the adults in our lives don't have anything going on except for what it is that, you know, that, that they do with, with, with kids. And so premature pleasures was treks was was the, the, the kid's story and the adult who comes in and influences. But Ancient of Ways is the adult story uh, about the woman who influences not just kids, but also the older women. You know, I know you talked about uh, loving that old that last scene, you know, in, in, in the play very much. So yeah, so this is um yeah, so premature pleasures was the first one and uh, it's just, it's interesting watching, you know, how all of this is coming together. That's another hint. I, <laughs> that sounds exciting. I have to see that, but um, moving on. The next question, what are you looking for when finding actors for plays, kids and adults? So when I'm looking for actors, I am, um, I'm interested in who can tell who can perform the, the, the compassion of the Black woman or the sweetness of the Black girl in, a, in an honest way? So none of us are, no, nobody's perfect, right? But who is it that knows how to communicate strength, sass, talent, and also, you know, sweetness? Um, the stories that I write are based on like real characters that everybody can say, okay, look, I know that person. And, you know, 
in my neighborhood and my family. And uh, so I look for actors who can translate that experience so that when people come to see the production, they're like, ah, I know that they're telling the truth about that character, like the way that they embody it. I, I know, I, I know that person, you know. So that that's really what I what I look for. Um, um, I'm very much a uh, what we call a, a quotidian storyteller, meaning I, I tell stories about like our present day experience and reality. And so I know that there are a lot of folks who love to like tell you know narratives about history. I'm actually working on the on the historical piece right now, but what I love more is to be able to tell the stories that mark this moment that say, you know, at this particular point in history, in our present day history, there like this, this, these were the things that we were dealing with in this particular setting, in this particular environment. So yeah. you hear that y'all? The next day she does. I want to see you there. That's right. I see you. <laughs> um, the second to last question do you love what you do? Oh, without a doubt. And do you know why I love it? Why? Because I get to meet people like you. Aww. In what other space would I have been able to meet you and your mother, who I've also cast uh, in the production as well? So it was like her mom brought uh, brought uh, brought Jada to the uh, the the uh, audition. And uh, you know, of course, when I'm working with young people, I have to meet all of their, you know, meet everyone's parents. And uh, and then you know, some moms will stay for the rehearsal. And uh, it just so happened I had a non-speaking role. I just needed to like have like a, an extra church mother to play a particular part. And I was like, oh, mother four, come on over here. <laughs> so she thought she was gonna be in the background. I was like, not, not. And I think she got a line too. Yeah, mother four has a line in, in, in the play as well. So, and dancing, the whole thing. It's been amazing. Yeah. So that's why I love what I do because in, in what other way would we have would we have met? Um actually the story behind me actually getting in here is like I don't know because I guess I watch too much dance mom and like DD4L because when auditioning for those type of teachers, it's like, you know what? Uh your plie wasn't uh great or your foot was important you know what you're out next year you might make it and so when i heard about it i was actually very excited but the day it actually was i was like uh i don't know i don't have a dance to come up with i don't have clothes but then my mom told me that it was actually a group performance then i felt kind of better but then i still felt kind of nervous and hesitant, mm. like, oh, what if I don't make it? What if I don't do this? What if oh I don't do that? Goodness. But then my mom actually encouraged me to go and I said, I actually went. And then when I went, I was like, oh, this is fun. This is fun. Then <laughs> when she got to the ratchet phrase, I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, the ratchet praise dance is a whole vibe. I can't wait for people to see that part. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? I love it. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Another thing. Um, and then the last question is, when is the play? Where is it? And where can you buy the tickets? So the play is, thir uh, it opens uh, Thursday, June 14. Uh, and it runs uh, Thursday to Sunday, 7.30 p.m. at St. Agnes, uh, the historic St. Agnes um, Hospital. It's like a, a right next to St. Augustine's University. Uh, we will be performing theater on the lawn. So bring your lawn chairs. Uh, again, it is for, you know, a, an adult audience. And uh, so nauseous. Uh, bring your popcorn. Popcorn. Like, yeah, just like bring your whole setup. Like, right. Uh, lawn chairs, like just Come and be prepared to have a, a, a really good time. So it runs uh, Thursday, uh, July 14th through the end of July, July 31st, St. Agnes um, Hospital, the historic St. Agnes in Raleigh. And uh, I am super, super excited. And I have to tell you, I would have, it would have been a crime for you to have not been cast in my show. Like that would have just been super tragic. I don't know what my production would be if, if, you know, you, Denver, Krista, you know, Jaden, you're like, all of y'all are just so, um, you're, you're so amazing. 
but um, particularly you and Denver, I had to have y'all choreograph your own opening dance. And I said, don't court, just, I just come and like, you're gonna hear some drumming. So like, make it do what it do. Both of you pleasantly surprised both of me. So I uh, pleasantly surprised me. So I cannot imagine who in their right mind would dare turn down y'all's very gifted presence. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't realize that that was a thing like well I, I, I don't like the mean spiritedness a lot of a lot of stuff that's on tv it's like they feel you know they act like you have to be the the worst in order to to do the most I don't know I hate that but that's just me and we're going to buy the tickets because I want a full house I do too I want like all of the shows to sell out because then the cast gets bonuses. So it's like, what, what? As soon as like when them shows sell out, it's like, okay, got to spread the love. Um, so yeah, so uh, eventbrite.com. That's, a, that's the, the, the website where, where you can get the tickets. And you can also get tickets on my website at alexisrone.com. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have. Any last words before? Oh gosh, this has been a wonderful interview. I'm so very, very excited. Uh, to be featured. And um, so thank you. Y'all come on out and see Jada and all of the, all of the amazing folks that are going to be part of this production. It is a lot of fun, very much centering Black girl joy, Black woman joy. Let's, uh, let's have some joy. Thank you. Thank you, Jada. Bye, world. <laughs>